Do you ever do a project where you maybe don't do things up to your normal standard or you cut a few corners or you, you, you kind of go for the good enough for government work approach and then you get no peace, you can't sleep at night because you stew about it, wish you'd done it right? Well, that has recently happened to me. What I'm referring to is a dual sport uh, conversion on, on the bike. So dual sport is it's basically taking an off-road motorcycle and, and getting it licensed, getting a plate on it so you can go back and forth, so you can ride on the road or ride on the street. Now, you know, I'm gonna be 95% off-road, but those times if I wanna connect a trail, uh, you know, or, or just wanna maybe run down to the store or just take a sh short ride into town, just have a little fun in the summertime, it's nice to have that option. Rather than have to have two bikes, you can have one bike. So. To get my license plate, I had to have a couple things. I had to have horn, uh, blinkers, high-low beam, uh, rear view mirrors, DOT tires, a few things like that uh, to, to get the plate. So when I called the DMV, uh, I asked them and they said, yeah, you've got to, if it's a dirt bike and you've dual sported it, you've got to uh, have uh, put everything on, you've got to go get an inspection and all these things. And so I, I did all of that. I, I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'll just get kind of an aftermarket kit and I'll put that on. Uh, and then I went to the DMV to get my plate, which I have, uh, and they didn't even do an inspection. They didn't care. All they wanted was their, their $800 or $900 or whatever it was uh, for sales tax. Getting back to the thing that really bugged me was this phony, this phony kit. I, I've all, everything on my, on my bike, I've, I've done properly, you know, the best that I could do, you know, the, the best stuff. And, and to have this hanging on there, it, it made me crazy. Jack and I went for a ride and and I, I went, I went, had a, just a small crash and this, you know, the lens thing popped off. I'm like, this is just ne it's never going to last. It's phony. I'm going to just be constantly replacing it because it, it's got a huge light. It's not very good quality. It didn't fit very good. I had to do a bunch of chopping and modifying and it, it bugged me to no end to have this garbage hanging on the back of the bike. So I had to come up with a solution and I think, I think I've got it. Check that out. How clean and nice is that? Gone is that all of that, that phony uh, aftermarket stuff. Now we've got the factory rear tail light with the all factory harnesses, everything plugged in and check out the blinker. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's, it's gotta be so far and stick out and it's not gonna meet DOT and all of that. I don't care. It's not a, it's not a primary street bike. It's just a little bit of CYA if I find myself in that situation. But isn't that, isn't that cool how that tucked up underneath there? So what I did, is I found these little tiny three quarter inch LED. They've got three LED li lights that they use. I think they use, well, I don't know, maybe trailers or marker lights, but they're really good quality and they're really affordable and they're all potted in there. They're all se sealed, look at that. There's, it's impossible for water to get in there. And they're so cheap. I got, um, they come in a rubber, a really nice rubber grommet right there. So you drill like a seven eighths hole and then here's the light, it comes out and it's got the tape on it. I mean, really nice, nice quality. And they're, they're isolated, you know, so they've got that rubber mount in there. If you do happen to break one, it's just a matter of uh, popping it out, unhooking the wire. I got the really nice, the original Japanese Honda, you know, connectors. So everything is, it would be easy to replace. And I couldn't be happier. These little things were so cheap. There was, I got, um, what did I get? I think there were 10, 10 amber, and 10 red for $15. Just amazing. Let me show you from the, from the backside. Here you can see from the backside, and it is pretty sunny out today, but these are very, very bright. And the nice thing about it is what, I, what you run into is you, is you get a lot of you know, brush or when you, you, not, you fall over, you crash your bike, and having anything sticking out like that, it's just gonna go. And these are all tucked up under there, really nice, all on the factory switches. Beautiful. I just just think that that turned out so good. I'm so happy with it. Yep, I know it's not, not to code, uh, but uh, it's better than not having any at all. Um, now I'll show you how I did the front. Here again is another one of those things. It just was just shabby and crummy. So I had those aftermarket uh, hand guards, which were really low quality and, and crummy, really flimsy. I wanted to have the nice ones on there. And they had these LED lights in there, which again were very poor quality, really crummy LEDs. And they didn't fit well in here. They're made for a flat surface. And you can see, I mean, I'm just embarrassed to show you this. It looks so bad. I knew better than, than I, when I put those in there. I was so unhappy with it. That's what I, why I started looking for 
for other things. So what I've done is I've ordered a couple more uh, replacement hand guards and I just tested this out, how that, that little light's gonna fit in there. Isn't that slick how that fits in there? And if, if you do break one, it's just a matter of popping it out of, out of the rubber grommet there and they fit nice and tight. I don't think that they're ever gonna come out. If they do, you push them back in. But isn't that a nice clean look on there? That's gonna be way better. So when that comes, I'll unplug these, we'll, we'll drill the holes, we'll put the new ones in here and get rid of this garbage and have a clean front blinker set up. Is that correct? Right, open, left, close? Yep, that's better. <clears throat> so Brian, if you'd uh, grab uh, some blue Loctite, yes. Uh, and um, this here, this keeper is coming out. Uh, let's uh, Loctite that, tighten that up in there, and then uh, hit the grease certs on it. Yeah. Do we need to drop this all the way to tighten this, or can you do it right here? If it's, I think it's already threaded. You might uh, just take the pressure off of it. I think it should be all right. And uh, uh, grab some zip ties and see if you can tie this up in kind of a cleanly manner where it's not gonna, they're gonna get hung up on anything because they're a little bit long. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt the dual sport here. So uh, Brian and I are just, we're getting ready. We got quite a bit of forestry work that, we, that we're gonna be doing. Uh, they'll be coming up on sh videos here pretty soon now that the snow's melted and we've got a lot of cleanup and different things and we've got some planting to do this spring. Um, but one of the things we're gonna be trying that we haven't really used too much is the, uh, is the brush rake here. So we're, um, we had some hose, pro some fitting problems. So we got that all sorted out and getting that ready. So um, look forward to that coming up very soon here. So that's a pretty nice Loctite collection you have there, Brian. Are you, are you trying to show off with that? For years. <laughs> Do you know about the whole Loctite dilemma on the channel? The controversy. I've heard that some people thought that uh, you were bragging on your uh, collection of Loctite. Yeah, so I thought we might as well just keep that going. So just so all of you can be hateful and jealous towards Brian and I and our, look at that. Behold, wouldn't you be jealous if you saw your neighbor with that? I'm not, I, I might question my manhood a little bit, actually. <laughs> so, which are you going to choose? Which it, what's it going to be? Are you going to go for the this 263 or the 243? Or? Oh, well, you know, why not some of both? You know, who can really choose between the 243 and the 263? So you're saying with Loctite, you can have your cake and eat it too? As long as you've got more than two bolts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the other thing that I did was I upgraded the front headlight. This was the factory headlight. I got caught out the other night, or I was got, didn't get back home before dark, and I had to rely upon this. It was pretty much a joke. I uh, couldn't see very well, uh, not DOT approved, and... I don't know why they wasted their time with it. They should have put a better bulb in there than this. So I upgraded this to, um, it's uh, made by Cyclops, I think in Idaho, and it's an LED and it is wickedly bright. It only takes 30 watts. It's so bright, it looks like a Baja racing light. And the nice thing about it, it's got two inputs. So it's got a 20 watt and a 30 watt input. So you can have a high and a low beam. And the low beam is DOT approved. So you're not gonna, not gonna uh, blind people when you're on the road with it. That's a for a hundred dollars, I think is what that whole thing was. That is a awesome um, deal uh, for what you get. The other thing that I did was I moved the horn. The horn actually was pretty good. And so I remade, I, I basically rebuilt the whole wiring harness and did it properly using the, the, I got the right crimper and the silicone, the Honda style jet made in Japan, not the Chinese ones, uh, the nice um, crimpers right there that's that's what the fact like a factory bike would have right there and i'm out here because i had it behind the number plate and it was scrunched up against the wires and you couldn't really hear it and that now it's got a nice tab mounted on the radiator guard and if it gets damaged it's easy to swap out you know but uh it, and it's a way louder it almost uses this guard here as kind of a resonator or something and i'll show you how bright that headlight is too every time. That's on the high setting. So there you can see the tail light with the blinker. Uh, it, the sun is, sun is shining directly on it, so it's, it's actually a lot brighter uh, than it looks on the camera. So I think I'm about done with everything. Every time I say that, I see Brian over there smirking at me. He knows better. You're never done with the motorcycle, are you? Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, uh, you always, you, you always go like halfway to completion. 
<laughs> he understands. So uh, what? The, the, I guess there's a couple things I did since last time. So I did change the shifter, uh, the foot shifter right here, not for the bling factor, but because the uh, guys uh, that I was riding with were breaking these. They were breaking off in the middle of nowhere. And so uh, they've been upgrading them to the, these hammer heads, which surprisingly, is uh, a whole lot easier to, to use. It's grippier, it's just, it's, I was surprised. I didn't think it'd make a difference. I was just hoping having a nice forged arm there would be stronger. The other thing that I did was, uh, is I kept the, uh, the indicator switch right there. So I've hooked up, the, so we've got the headlights, we've got the high and low, and then we've got the turn signals and the horns, and I got rid of that on off switch over there. I, I didn't like having all that clutter. And then I remade, a good portion of this harness and kind of upgraded the wiring on that. Um, I've added a ram mount right here for the mirror. I don't have it yet, but I've ordered, oh, you focus, you think. Uh, I've got a mirror that will clamp on here, rear view mirror. Good grief. You would think that the, you could get a camera that would focus. Um, they'll clamp on there as well as my GPS. I can ram mount, ram mount on there, so I'll try that. So brake system's working good. Everything's working good. The bike is, uh, very much dialed in. It's very comfortable to ride. It's um, just the focus thing is getting my goat. It's a. Uh, it's really nice. Very very nice. I'm very happy so far. So since we're on the topic of things to come, we've got. Um, I'm sourcing. I've just about got all the van stuff sourced. So we're going to be back on that. Um, doing a big push on that. Uh, here's the the inverter we're going to be using. This is Magnum Energy. I think they build these up in Washington. Magnum, this is gonna be the power inverter, so this will convert our everything we need to 110. Um, very nice unit, a pure sine wave, I believe. But one of the most exciting things is the insulation. That was one of the hardest decisions. Man, there's a lot of different opinions on ins how to insulate the van. Why would you wanna insulate a van? Well, they're cold. You're working, living inside of a sheet metal box and all of, if it's cold outside, it just radiates inside. It's freezing, freezing cold. So um, some guys use, um, uh, denim, all, it's all chewed up. Some guys use a 3M Thinsulate. Some guys, unfortunately, use fiberglass. I was shocked. I, I went to one of the top van conversion places that's outside of Portland um, to get some stuff. And I was asking them, uh, they do tons of conversions, really high-end ones. I asked them what they use for insulation. They said, oh, we use fiberglass. And I said, like home fiberglass? He's like, yeah. I said, well, what about all of the all of the fiberglass, uh, the particles that are gonna be you know, floating around in there, you never see all that, all that stuff out because every time you hit a bump or, or move up and down, it's being agitated and it's go gonna be going into the air. You're essentially turning your van into a, a toxic environment. And his response was, well, if it wasn't safe, they wouldn't sell it. Like, oh, good grief, I can't even imagine it. So that is not uh, at all what I would ever consider doing. So what I decided on uh, was wool lamb's wool this is a fascinating stuff so it comes in two different um kind of mediums one is bats you know our regular batch bat which is like what you put into walls and then it has these little tiny balls kind of little fuzz balls that you can use to pack into crevices let me bring you up here close and i'll show you what i'm talking about so this is really nice stuff when you when you look at you know how when they build like top of the line homes, like the, you know, just the best of the best, the most expensive homes. That's what, what the installation they use in there. They use natural 100% um, wool. Uh, these bats right here, that's just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I love wool. I have gone uh, away from uh, wearing, I, I wear, because where we live, I wear um, uh, insulated or long johns, especially on my legs uh, half of the year. And I've always worn polypropylene synthetic until recently, I switched over to wool. I've been wearing these ice, maybe a company called Icebreaker, 100% wool. It's incredible, incredible the difference. I even, you know, this may be sound a little bit strange, but I think there might be something to it. I have a friend, two friends actually, that claim that if they wear polypropylene, it takes, they don't feel like they're as strong. They don't, they don't, it's weird or their body doesn't feel right. And, and I, when I heard that, it reminded me that in the Old Testament, there is some instruction about not mixing fabrics. I don't remember what it was. And, and a polyester or a polypropylene, I think, falls in that category. So I, we're going to have to do more research on that. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to it, but I love wool. I absolutely love wool. So these are the bats here. So these will go in the headliner uh, and also in the walls. The most exciting part are these little guys here. These are 
they're basically just little little balls, little balls of wool uh, that are going to be really nice for, for packing into areas. Like imagine taking your door panel apart and you have all those nooks and crannies and all those little cubbies. I mean, trying to get bats in there uh, that where they loft because insulation, if you compress it, it doesn't it doesn't work very well. It needs to be fluffy. It needs it needs to be lofty um, and have that airspace in there. And so taking handfuls of these guys right there and loosely packing them into all the crevices. I mean, what a dream that will be. So if you're doing this conversion or you want to have, you know, just the best of the best insulation, these guys have just been wonderful. They, they sent the, this out to me uh, when I was kind of curious about it to kind of look at it and play with it to see if that would work for the van. And I think it's going to work great. Uh, Havelock, Havelock wool, um, great, great folks. Um, just neat stuff. So that's going to be coming up. We'll put that all in there and um, it's going to be amazing to, to feel the difference and the sound dampening. So that is about all I have for you today. The, um, my in-laws uh, made it safely home. They're, they're uh, done with their visit. So I kind of took a little time off while they were there here and didn't work, didn't get too serious about videos, but we'll be back to our, our normal programming. You're really looking forward to sharing some forestry. We got a lot of forestry stuff uh, to do with, get the family involved and, uh, it's going to be a great summer. It's going to be a busy one, but a great summer. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.